Hello. So I asked on all my social medias for people to send me reasons they were hearing that people were saying that you should not get the COVID vaccine, as long as it didn't fall into one of two categories. One, it couldn't just be an outright lie, and two, it couldn't just be somebody being selfish for the sake of being selfish. So I asked for people to send me reasons, and fortunately, some of you did. Thank you so much for sending in the stuff that you did. Uh, so I'm going to talk about those things. We're going to break them down, and I'm going to show you um, how I found the answers so that if you have questions like this in the future, you can find the answers for yourself. Now, before I get into the reasons, let me say, you're probably not going to change anyone's mind about this stuff. I mean, if someone isn't using logic to form their opinion about something, you're not going to change their opinion using logic. And a lot of times people will ask you gotcha questions, questions that you can't have an answer to or questions that can't be verified, in which case, what do you do? What I am going to do is show you how simple it is to find answers to so many questions that people have and that they just aren't willing to verify. Um, and also keep in mind, I'm only going to be talking about the things that people sent me. There are other stuff, there's other stuff I've heard before that I'm not going to talk about, but if there's anything else you want me to look up for you, sure, why not? Let's send me a message somewhere and let me know. One other thing I should mention is that everything I'm going to be referencing is from a somewhat authoritative source. It's either a government website, uh, a university research arm, uh, peer reviewed journals, um, something like that. I'm not linking to random people's blog posts or I saw a meme on Facebook, right? This is all stuff from the horse's mouth about what the reality of the situation is. So there's one very good reason. So my friend Christy, who is a nurse, sent me one very good reason uh, to not get the vaccine. And that's this. If you have an anaphylactic reaction to the first dose, you probably shouldn't get the second dose. But talk to your primary care provider, and uh, maybe there's a particular thing, a particular ingredient in the va in a particular vaccine that isn't agreeing with you. Maybe you can try a different vaccine. We'll talk about the ingredients later. But if you have an anaphylactic reaction to it, you probably shouldn't go, go back for the second dose of the same thing. Okay, so now for the juicy part. The first bad reason I heard is people saying, well, the vaccines weren't FDA approved. So here's what I did. I went to Google and I typed in COVID vaccine FDA approval. And the first one that comes up is a press release, FDA approves first COVID-19 vaccine. But then we get the second link, fda.gov slash COVID-19 vaccines. When we click on that, we come to this page. And this page gives you all the information that the FDA has on the vaccines, including COVID-19 vaccines authorized for emergency use or FDA approved. Turns out the Pfizer vaccine is approved by the FDA. It was approved on August 23rd, 2021. The other vaccines were given emergency authorization. What that means is that the FDA didn't do a full-on test themselves, but they're trusting in the clinical trials that have been going on for a year and a half. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. By the way, if you are looking for uh, information from Canada, Health Canada has a fantastic website. And as we can see here, Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson are all approved for use in Canada by Health Canada. The next couple of arguments I heard had to do with timing. So the first argument was, well, the timing was too rushed. They, they, they rushed the clinical trials, so we don't know if the vaccines are safe. Fortunately for us, Johns Hopkins University has a great explainer of the difference between a typical timeline for a clinical trial and the accelerated timeline that these vaccines went through. Basically, clinical trials are about sample sizes. In phase one and the earlier phases in a clinical trial, they're just doing smaller groups. And then by phase three, you're doing huge groups to see how people are reacting. But because we wanted to speed this process up, we gave the vaccine to more people sooner so we could get more results sooner. Another argument that was brought up is the issue of long-term effects. We don't know what the long-term effects of these vaccines is going to be. My response to that is, how long-term are we talking? According to this link from the NIH in the U.S., the Pfizer vaccine phase one trial started April 29th, 2020. I've got links below for the other big three vaccines, your Moderna, your Johnson & Johnson, and your AstraZeneca. But long story short, the Moderna phase one trial started in April of 2020, the AstraZeneca phase one trial started in August of 2020, and the Johnson & Johnson phase one trial started in July of 2020. So when we're talking about long-term effects, what ingredients are we talking about? Because we can find the ingredients of the vaccines too. I have a link below that will take you to the Health Canada website that talks about all the vaccines. But as we can see here, just looking at Pfizer, for example, uh, the Pfizer, it's been approved by Health Canada. And if we scroll down the page, there is the list of ingredients right there. But again, the long-term effects argument is one that you can't really verify because I could say, well, in 100 years, everybody who got the vaccine will be dead. But if you remember what I said earlier about sample size, Johns Hopkins University also has a fantastic COVID dashboard. And as you can see right here, so far, according to this, there's been 6.7 billion vaccine doses administered worldwide. Billion. So far, the biggest side effect has been fewer COVID deaths. Now, one argument I heard that was interesting was somebody said, 
uh, that they know somebody who said they already had COVID, so they would have had a natural immunity to it. Um, so why bother getting the vaccine? This article from the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. says that a natural immunity to the vaccine tends to last around eight months or so. However, this article from the CDC in the U.S. says that if you're vaccinated, you're far less likely to get reinfected than if you're not vaccinated, even if you've had COVID before. And this article from Science, which is a peer-reviewed science journal, says that you actually do get a bigger boost from being vaccinated even after you've had COVID. So even if you've had COVID, still worth getting the vaccine. Now you know the information's out there. If you look at if you look for it from trusted sources, from government sources, from universities, from peer-reviewed science journals, you can find good information about what's going on and why. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching and please stay safe.